Greetings, people of the light. We welcome you on this channel, Yabakanyi Selva, the Sons of Fire. Today we are talking about ancestral cloths, Izinkuboze Lozi, and what they actually represent. Keep in mind that the way that these ancestral cloths will be explained here will be different from what is already out there. So keep an open mind. We're going to have a series of videos where we will be explaining each cloth on each video. And this episode right here is an introduction video. And then the next video will be part one of the video series. So as I said, we'll be discussing one cloth on each video. So be sure not to miss out on any of that. It is common knowledge that each of these ancestral cloths have different meanings. Each cloth says something different about the healer. Each cloth represents a particular type of energy. But what is less known is that these ancestral cloths are also manuscripts where some of the most esoteric teachings of the Bantu people are found. And only, only if you have the key will you be able to read what is written in these ancestral manuscript cloths. With that being said, I will talk a little bit about the Bantu cosmology here so that we are all on the same page. And yes, there will be a video focusing strictly on the Bantu cosmology where I'll be explaining this process step by step in full. But I'll just summar summarize everything for now. In Bantu cosmology, it is said that before creation existed, there was only nothingness, a formlessness, a void, what some call the primeval mass. It was a chaos which in Zulu is called Ingaga Naga, we are told by Ubabu Vusama Zulu. And then out of this formless chaos came creation, which in this case is order. So nothingness is chaos and creation is order. Now, creation in ancient Bantu symbolism is represented as four leopards that are pulling or stretching a leopard skin on, on all four opposite directions. So if you can just imagine a, a full body skin of a leopard and on each corner of the skin imagine there's a leopard pulling that very same skin towards the opposite directions. That symbolism is the ancient symbolism of creation itself. It is the ancient symbolism of chaos and order. Four leopards stretching out a leopard skin or four lions stretching out a lion skin. It is said that creation is held intact and in position by these four beasts representing order. And the day that these beasts let go of the skin, everything in creation will go back to its source the nothingness, the chaos, in Naga Naga. The four beasts represent order. The skin that they are pulling apart represents chaos. These four beasts are what keeps creation in order. In other words, they keep creation from going back to nothingness. This right here is the summary of the Bantu cosmology, as I said, which has to be understood so that we can get into the secrets encoded in these clo uh, cloths. So now that we have uncovered a small piece of the Bantu cosmology, we can take a look at these cloths. We're going to be looking specifically at different animal prints. Uh, and so with the animal prints, we see that there's always the same design, they are always encoded the same way. There's always an animal printed in the middle and there's always the same type of animal printed on all four corners of the same cloth, right? This is true with most animal cloths. Looking at this cloth while reflecting back to the Bantu cosmology, we can clearly see that creation or chaos and order 
is represented here. A hidden mystery of Ubuntu cosmology is depicted right here on these ancestral cloths. The four animals on the corner that we see and the one in the middle is the exact symbology of order and chaos that we just discussed right now. The beasts that hold creation intact are depicted on the corners and the skin that they are stretching is represented by the animal printed in the middle. In fact, the whole cloth symbolizes an animal skin, so <laughs> you can imagine. I'll say it again. These cloths are manuscripts. As we can see, they are speaking of ingagangaga, chaos and order, which is creation, or endelondolo. This is part of the cosmology of the Bantu people, represented clearly for all who have eyes to see. Another aspect of the mystery is a very important one that actually connects everything together. It connects this cosmology and the cloth itself, right? This aspect is relevant, is relevant to all healers and all people who have a spiritual calling. Before you are aware that you have a spiritual calling, there are certain signs and messages that you, you will be given, and these signs will alert you. They will show you, they will prove to you that you have a calling. Some of these signs come in a form of dreams, and all of these all of these dreams are regarded as very, very sacred dreams. One of these dreams is where you find yourself being attacked by four leopards. And these leopards will be tearing your skin apart towards four opposite directions. Sometimes these are not leopards, but they are lions or snakes or crocodiles, depending on your totem. Sometimes these beasts are many. They are more than four. Sometimes they can be less than four. This is a very, very sacred dream of end time, as it is called. And it happens at the beginning of the awakening. In fact, it happens before the awakening. These are the dreams that alert you about your calling, about your gift. They obviously happen before initiation. But once you enter into initiation they will slowly but surely stop. And then the same beasts that used to attack you and devour you in your dreams will become your guides. They will protect you. They will give you messages. They will direct you in your journey. They will work along with you as they teach you how to work along with them. There, there's an exchange of power and energy in whom between the initiate and their totems once the individual undergoes the process of initiation. But that's a revelation for another day. In this archetypal dream that we, we just spoke about, we see that the same symbolism is also there. The four leopards coming in a form that is specific to your energy, specific to, to your totems, and they rip you apart, they tear you. This dream right here is the dream of chaos and order, is the dream of ingagangaga, symbolized in dream form. To put it clearly in terms of dream symbolism, when you dream of being attacked by these totems, it symbolizes ingagangaga, the chaos. Because in this stage, you, you are really not aware of your gift, you are not aware of your calling, and at this time you'll be experiencing many challenges in your life. This is the stage of chaos and confusion. right? And once they stop attacking you, they are now working along with you in your dreams. This is representing order. Because everything is in order in your life. You are now aware that you, you, you have a calling and you have responded and taken the necessary steps towards the calling, right? 
generally uh, this is uh, general information really it is known that before you respond to your calling you will experience upheavals in your life you, you your life will be turned upside down especially if you don't respond this right here is a state of confusion inyaganyaga representing inqaganqaga chaos right the time before creation aligns to the time before your spiritual journey in the tarot in terms of now western spirituality and still like it's not western there's a reason why but in terms of the tarot this state is represented by the zero card zero is nothingness this card is known as the fool representing that at this stage you knew nothing about your calling you you were not aware of your spiritual gifts and you haven't really entered the path you ask yourself many questions that you have no answers for so in a way you are you, you were a fool in this stage you know and then it is also generally known that when you answer your calling and you enter initiation the upheavals in your life the confusion the battle they slowly but surely stop specifically those that were caused by the state of inqaganqaga your lack of knowledge about your gift and your calling right so if you were sick before initiation you should be healed when you enter initiation for example this state represents the order that came out of the chaos because now your life is in order you are setting your life in order you are you are you, are, you know receiving messages and you are doing accordingly you are aligned and you are exactly where you are supposed to be all this is in accordance with the ancient bantu law of correspondence that as above so below as below so above we see that there's a connection between how creation came about and how healers awaken to their spiritual calling and you know all of this is actually represented on a simple ancestral cloth with symbols you know the journey of creation is reflected by the journey of an individual healer as above so below as below so above in conclusion respect these ancestral cloths and cherish their sacredness they carry ancient secrets of our ancestors so wear them with pride when you wear these cloths do remember that you were once in chaos but you have now created harmony and order in your life because you are now governed by the wise ones your guides and your ancestors towards the path of light take this and reflect it on the higher aspects of life and there a great secret shall be revealed this is only for the deaf ears guys let he who has an ear hear in conclusion oh yeah in closing well we, we've come to the the the, the end of of our, of our of our session for today and uh, love and light guys this is just as i said uh, an introduction video for the next coming videos we'll be deciphering and expl explaining each cloth you know it's going to be a series of short videos so be sure to stick around guys subscribe and notify yourself so you don't miss out on anything it's going to be very very enlightening i promise you otherwise if you learned and you like this video just click on that like button right there from me to you it's utando nokanya love and light togozini tamaku hutepe